I was as shocked as everybody else was when Coach told me we were going to run it. Um, you know, so I'm just fortunate that it worked out. Only three days removed from the biggest moment of his career, Thomas Morstead was still putting it all together. Not only the momentum swinging onside kick, but reflecting on an eventful rookie season and a football career that got a kickstart after he was cut from his high school soccer team. Oh, it was the worst day of my life, but it ended up, ended up being the best thing that ever happened to me. So I wouldn't be playing football if it wasn't for that. Drafted in the fifth round as a punter out of SMU, Morstead stumbled upon kickoff duties near the end of the preseason when the Saints signed John Carney. I've been opportunistic my whole life, and they were taking a break, so I just started kicking off. John and Coach noticed right away, and... Uh, you know, then he started asking me if I could directional or what I could do, different things. Notice right away how far the kicks were going. Yeah, far and high. And they came up to me before the Lions game. They said, you want to give it a shot? I said, sure. The play that will go down in Super Bowl history actually was modeled after another successful Saints onside kick. It came during a regular season game with Jacksonville back in 2007. Olindo Mare may have kicked it, but John Carney watched it from the sidelines as a member of the Jags. So, so John remembered it, pulled it up, we had tape on it. I watched it and they just showed me and I went out and started practicing it. And I was pretty good at it. So good, in fact, that as the Saints made the trip to Miami, Morstead could sense the coaching staff was growing more confident in the play. And the likelihood it would be called in the Super Bowl became a distinct possibility. What was that week like? And I know it's so secretive, the week, you know, practicing before the Super Bowl. Here you guys working on a trick play. Yeah, I was, I was a little bit paranoid about working on it just because there were media and camera, a lot of cameras out there. John Carney just told me, you know, I used to take free kicks in soccer um, yep. back in high school. Yep. And um, he just told me to bend it like Beckham. So I'm actually striking the ball about midway instead of underneath it to get it up. Yep right on the middle of the ball, on the side of it, and putting spin on the ball. You know, we snuck it in at different times when nobody was watching. But on Super Bowl Sunday, almost everybody was watching. The biggest play of his life was about to unfold in front of the largest television audience in history. With the Saints trailing 10-6 at the half, Morstead found out the play was on at the beginning of the longest halftime of his playing career. Coach Payton, came out of his little meeting with his coaches and he just walked by me in passing and he just um, he said hey we're on an ambush to start the half and then just kept on walking and I'm just like what so while Morstead was contemplating pulling off the biggest trick play in Super Bowl history he had to sit through a who concert made even more ironic with what they were singing we don't get fooled again my heart was racing the whole time and uh, you know you just try and remember how it worked out every day in practice and you you know just the biggest thing is just knowing you can do it and being confident that it's going to work. The element of surprise was one of the big reasons the Saints felt the play would work. Indy's Hank Basket was the only Colt who would have had a shot. Did you pick Basket? Was Basket the guy when you looked on video? Was, was he the guy in that position pretty well, much every time? Both the outside guys. Um, we're leaving early before the kick, so we knew we were hoping not to hit anybody, just to have a plane recovery with you know them taking off and us just scooping it up. So the stage had barely been struck for the Who when it was set for Morstead. This is prayer time for me. Uh, just saying a little prayer to the Lord. Hopefully, helps me uh, calm my nerves down here. And uh, you just try and go through your same routine, showing them same thing. You take your same steps, get your hand up. And then you start at it, it's the same pace all the way into the ball. And then at the last two steps, all of a sudden you slow down, you put the brakes on, and then you're here and you're scooping it and it's not gonna be that high and you're spiraling it out there. And it, when it hits, it should actually bend back. Onside kick to start the second half. You're, you're doing this, you're doing this. That scrum took forever. What were you thinking right away? Did you think Chris had it? Well, I saw Chris get, get his hands on the ball, and then I saw it kind of squirt through his legs, and then I saw him recover it again, and then that's when everybody dogpiled on top of him. Chris was yelling on the bottom of the pile. He said, Ref, I got the ball in my hands. Look, I'm holding it right here. And the Saints football, they recover the onside kick. 
What a fearless start to the second half. I think I told Chris I loved him. <laughs> Running off the field, I was like, I love you, Chris. <laughs> Ironic that it was Chris Reese recovering Morstead's kick. Five days earlier, we had Reese set up the rookie on media day. Go, go get me a drink. Go get me a drink, rookie. That's how you got to do it. Go get me. Thank you. That's what rookies do. That's what they're supposed to do. Go get me a brownie. Our day with Morstead wasn't over. Next stop, the Fox and Hound for a little lunch. And it didn't take long before he was recognized. Man, she give your hands, sir. How you doing? <laughs> Congratulations. Has your life changed at all already? What, what, what's been the noticeable, tangible difference since being a, a Super Bowl champion? Um, I don't think I've ever been so sleep deprived in my life. Uh, the past three nights have been a lot of fun. We have a lot of opportunities to do guest appearances and autograph signings and stuff like that. So, pretty comical. <laughs> I think it's funny that somebody would pay me to show up at their business. I was talking to my parents today, I told them, I said, this is the best experience I've ever had. I mean, the Super Bowl was amazing, but the parade was unbelievable. What was it like, what stood out to you about riding through the streets of downtown New Orleans? You know, we only went three miles, and it was so crowded on some of the routes. I mean, it took us six hours. I've never been down here from Mardi Gras, but I hear, you know, sometimes females will, will do things for beads. <laughs> and I got caught, some girl, uh, you know, lifted up her shirt and I got caught and I was trying to <laughs> stay away from that. I didn't know if any cameras were around or anything, so. But you, you caught it though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she kind of was pointed at me and said, you saw, give me some beads. <laughs> did you give so, her some? Yeah, I did, I did, I had to. So. <laughs> it is crazy though that um, not, not once on any of the shows do they mention your name. You know what, that's probably All they true. say is, they just say, and then Coach Payton decides to have his kicker kick the onside kick. Now you're from the Dallas area, and your buddies, your buddies were fired up about somebody did try to name the kicker, but they got it wrong. Yeah, I guess the Dallas Morning News uh, had written something saying that Garrett Hartley had had the game-changing play or something, and they were all upset about it because they're like, man, they wouldn't cover you when you're at, at SMU, but and they you just won the Super Bowl, and they still didn't get it right. My brother jokingly after the game said, hey man, this is the top of the mountain. And, you know, it's all downhill from here now. <laughs> like, it's never going to get any better. And I was like, oh, thanks. But uh, that's why you play next year. Go for a second second one in a row. If he does, you can be sure he'll take the memory of his former SMU special teams coach, Frank Gans, with him. Gans died the day after the Saints drafted Morstead. He celebrated the NFC Championship with a picture of Gans. And as he lined up for the kick of his life, it was the memory of one of the game's best special teams coaches ever that comforted the Saints rookie. You know, he always used to tell me, you, you got to be more aggressive than the opponent. I just thought it was fitting that me, a rookie punter, would just, you know, go out there and potentially have a game-changing play that could affect the outcome. And um, that's kind of what gave me the confidence to go out and do it. I knew it was what I was kind of supposed to do, so. Fitting in worked out pretty well. Absolutely, it worked out great. I think he may have helped the ball bounce the right way. That's what it's supposed to look like. Well, let me just say for, for who that's all over the Gulf Coast in the city of New Orleans, thanks, Thomas. Yeah, nice no, job. No problem. Nice job. <laughs>